Hello everyone, my name is Romaine Johnson and I help put together a virtual program for the Harry Barnes Medical Society, which is the laryngology head and neck section for the National Medical Association. We had a conversation with Bobby Seal and I put together some highlights. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Introduce yourself to the audience, talk a little bit about your childhood and your young adulthood, all the things, you know, things you did before you became a Black Panther, even thought about being a Black Panther. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, oh, let's say it this, let me say it this way. I have lectured in speaking engagements over a 50 plus year period at more than 800 universities and colleges in the United States of America alone. Uh, I've lectured in uh, the Scandinavian countries at one point uh, in uh, Germany and other places there, and uh, of course, Canada and all that. Uh, my early life involvement was I was raised a carpenter and a builder. My father was a master carpenter. Uh, my grandpa uh, and his brother, uh, Arch and Ed Seal, they uh, were carpenters. Uh, my great grandma, Winnie, which, who I did meet. Um, my God, when I was, what, 12, 13 years of age, she was about 102 then. Wow. And uh, she, uh, had, she was, she, she came out of slavery on Juneteenth in Texas at age uh, 16 or 17. And she went to, went to work for the Seal family. Now, the Seal family actually was the bankers in Jasper, Texas. That's in eastern Texas. And uh, the, 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 uh, um, the Seal family, in effect, as, as, as things went, and, and these, their kids got, became grown men in the 20s and stuff like this, and moving into the 30s, uh, there was some building going on that the banks financed for some company who was doing shale mining, uh, oil shale mining uh, in Eastern Texas, near the Louisiana border. Uh, I forget the name of that town. Anyway, my point is, is that that's where I, I, I'm, I, I'm at. My father built our first home when I was, and finished it when I was about seven and a half years of age in Port Arthur, Texas. So. He's a builder, and uh, even then, with me hanging around, once he had all the framings up in the walls and stuff, we would go over there on the weekends, and they were still doing the plumbing and electricity, but, you know, he would be doing some finished work and ask me to hand him a, a piece of wood, two by four, and he says, that's got knots in it, put it back, <laughs> and, it's, and then when I got him to explain to me what a knot was, he would show me on the wood where a branch had been growing at a point where it was cut, he says, and that make the wood weak, so I didn't want that piece of wood. In other words, that's when I began to learn to be a carpenter at <laughs> seven years of age. And uh, World War II was moving out, and then we left that house after a, a, a half a year and moved to San Antonio because World War II jobs took up my father. They, uh, enlisted my father and not so much in the army, but he is his, his carpentry skill. And then uh, we moved to San Antonio, although we still own that house and, and rented it. And then uh, a little bit after that, uh, my father, uh, they moved his job from the Randolph field outside, outside of San Antonio to Oakland, California. Uh, we were still there in Texas and once the World War II was over, my father sent for us. So my mother loaded us up, et cetera. Uh, and we got on the Santa Fe train and we stopped in Berkeley, California and got off that train. And uh, we went to government projects, government projects that had been built during World War II. Uh, and uh, that's where I began to be raised at in Berkeley, California. And then my father later uh, had a cabinet shop and he trained me and my brother furniture repair and everything else. 
me, uh, I started excelling in school in architectural design and all this kind of stuff. Uh, when I got to the eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, all the way up to auxiliary stuff in uh, architecture, design, et cetera. When I was 16, my father and one of his friends had a job to add an upstairs, downstairs room and den, and that kind of stuff. But then instead of paying $200 for a architect to do the thing for them, they got me to do it and with the building codes and then my instructor at Berkeley High School really liked the idea because you know, you're training kids anyway and stuff. And here I had a major real project and I did all seven sheets, you know, and, 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 and complete uh, specification materials, specifications, et cetera. And they paid me a hundred dollars. <laughs> I was 16 years old. I'm a kid. I can't make no contract. And anyway, they put their names on the, on the plans and they passed inspection, what have you. So that, that's my involvement. After that, United States Air Force structural repair, high performance aircraft. Uh, I aced all of my uh, tech schools. I got A's, A pluses in, in, in recognition from base commanders, et cetera, and so on. And I uh, wound up at Ellsworth Air Force Base, Rapid City, South Dakota, up in the area where you have Mount Rushmore with the big heads uh, carved up into the uh, side of the mountain, the presidential heads. I'm just saying, that's me. Uh, I come out of the Air Force, structural repair, high performance aircraft, World Airways, worked in Los Angeles a short period, came back up with the steel strike, then landed a job. <clears throat> at Kaiser Aerospace and Electronics. I went out of the job in the engineering department doing non-destruct testing for engineering. Non-destruct testing for all engine frames of the Gemini missile program. This was a NASA project, uh, a job, you know, in the engineering department. So I'm working there for, for almost four years with 50, simultaneously, <clears throat> once I had the night shift, I, um, enrolled at Merritt College. We moved uh, right across the street from Merritt College in Oakland, California, and I enrolled as an engineering design major. But since I had a full-time job on the, doing the Gemini Missile Program, I could only take nine credit hours. So I always took me a math course, an anthropology course, and of course, my engineering design courses. And that is the period that I began to study and research history, uh, African and African American history and stuff like this here. I went to hear Dr. King speak, uh, what was that, about a year before I left there, before I left that job. And Dr. King, one of the things I really liked, you know, when I was growing up with church, I got tired of the excessive traumatizing uh, hell and damnation that, <laughs> that the preachers would do, you know, uh, it was a thing. But then I heard about Dr. King, and he wasn't talking how in damnation what he was talking about was ending this discrimination against uh, we African American peoples. And I went to hear him speak at the Oakland Auditorium, packed the auditorium, 7,000 people in there, standing room only. And Dr. King was speaking about why we need to upgrade our um, uh, struggle into the economics economic civil rights, etc. And he got to a point that we lived in the San Francisco Open Bay area. Dr. King at one point he says, he says, um, right here in the San Francisco Oakland Bay area, uh, Langendorf Bread Company and Kilpatrick's Bread Company will not hire any people of color. And he went on to say, and all across America, Wonder Bread Company will not hire any people of color. And Dr. King says, I say we're going to have to boycott them. We want to boycott them so consistently and so profoundly. We want to make Wonder Bread wonder where the money went. And that crowd, us, 7,000 people, hit the floor in a standing ovation. I was just one individual. I had no organization or nothing. But that was my first true African-American leadership uh, experience, you know, at any rate. As things move, I heard about the war on poverty programs and stuff like that. How do you, and my whole idea was how can we put up programs for, for jobs in, in the community? 
And uh, I fooled around and quit my job, my engineering job, after almost four years, just to work in the grassroots community. I took another job, a uh, canvassing with the Wall on Poverty program, and me and some other students got together and we created a tutorial program, got matching funds and all that stuff like that, and put it together. We had 100 youth in the North Richmond, California program there. And of course, that, that was my first program. We started that in, 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 in January or so of 1964. And that was really a thing for me. We did that. I got the building, et cetera. And I did the inspection and structure for the building and had uh, contractors come in and put extra restroom in the place because we had 100 youth coming in that being, we had 100 youth working and then they are tutoring each, 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 each tutor who's making minimum wage 36 hours a week in the summer, you know, 20 hours a week in the winter. It was a year round program. But the, the, we paid these youth, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, tutoring the first, second, third, and fourth grade. You see what I'm getting at? That was the type of program. It was an educational program and a jobs program for the youth in this Af tight, little tight African American community. But those little paychecks going back into the households was was what supplemented things. Plus, I got the whole community involved in in in, in Saturday or uh, um, Saturday African African American history courses. Because by this time, I have I know my African American history backwards, forward, sideways, and catacorn. As it by this time, and uh, that was my first program.